Hello and welcome back to Inquisitor Martyr. Last time we started a Zircon Void Crusade and we will continue with that by going actually right here. So, as you can tell by the title, I got some fun news about everybody's favorite South Korean game conglomerate, Nexon. I'm trying to think of how to, how to word this. So, the South Korean FTC decided to investigate Nexon because they make the game MapleStory. What happened was... MapleStory has these cubes that you use to upgrade gear. And the thing is, these, first off, they cost money. It's like a dollar. But they have percent chances of success or failure and varying quality. So you can get something really good, you can get something really bad, you can not get anything because you rolled bad. You know, all the typical free-to-play fair. We see this in uh, Diablo Immortal. We see this in a lot of free-to-play games when they want to force money out of you and they don't know how, so they just decide to put arbitrary chances on everything. But what happened was the investigation found something really interesting. First, the the uh, Nexon was found manipulating the success rates without sharing. And keep in mind this this started over a decade ago. They say this started like 2010, but so it's been a while. But first, it was manipulation. Then it was found that the best possible outcome when using the cubes was just not available. So if you could get, like, a legendary with, let's say, 500 is the max for a health bonus and 500 attack, you could never get those two 500s. It was impossible. They just never told you, hey, by the way, you can't actually do that. And the devs, of course, said, oh, well, this was done for balance. Which, you know, I'm I'm just going to say, you know, I'm kind of calling bullshit on that one. You can always balance these things. This isn't that big a deal. If, if it's a PvP balance, cause I've never played MapleStory. I don't know if there's PvP, but let's say there is. Then you do, like, gear equalizing. You know, you don't get your gear, or you get... Like, let's say it is 500 max health from an item, you cap out at plus 250. So everyone with 251 or more health gets capped at that 250 level. So you can kind of artificially bring it down. And if it's bosses or encounters, just make encounters that require that high... Like, a bunch of high rolls. It'll either be slowly done content, or it's just something that will get reached at some point. But so, you gotta think about this. They've had these sketchy cubes for, let's just say 10 years, even though some stuff says 14 years. Let's just say 10 for the sake of simplicity. And a dollar each, take a stab as to how much money they've earned off this. $420 million. Also, nice. The fun part 
is the South Korean FTC came in and said, oh, well, we're going to give them the biggest fine in FTC history. Nine million dollars. They got fined two and a half percent of their earnings off this, even though they manipulated drop rates and lied about a bunch of stuff. Seems about fair, right? You know, even though if you ask me, that's not a fine, that's just a business tax. 2% is just... That's a drop in the bucket. Granted, I don't know South Korean law. I don't know if they even have, like, class action lawsuits. If they do, I think they should probably get some people to do that because that's pretty scummy. And it's also made people question a lot of other parts of the game whether or not they do the same thing. And people just haven't figured it out. I heard... Something's like a flame or a blaze or some currency or something. I I don't, like I said, I don't play the game. I don't fully understand. But they were found doing shady stuff with that a while back. So it starts to make you wonder what else is going to happen. Quick gear dump. And we are back at it. And I believe it's this one we need. Yes. Now... The fun with this whole Nexon thing is it doesn't end there. Their their FTC is now looking at their other games, the other Maiden Korea Nexon games, out of concern that they may be doing this in others, which, if they've made that much money off one, I can guarantee they're doing it in others. But there was some other fun stuff. I have to actually sit down and, like, one hand the controller for this because I have to read all this out loud because this this will sound insane. During the investigation, it was found that Nexcon had patents or a patent for a dynamic RNG system when it comes to their loot box mechanics. This dynamic RNG system would have modifiers that would allow for drop rates can drop for players with high activity on their account, increase for players with low activity on their account, fluctuate based on the location of the player in the world, like real world, not in the game itself. It can fluctuate if the player has too many rare items in their possession, so can go down or up if they don't have a lot of rare items, then it can go down if too many rare items have been given to other players. So by other players getting an item, you get penalized. Then fluctuate based on the number of friends on the player's friends list. Fluctuate based on the stats of the friends fluctuate based on item rarity so I believe that's rarity of the item and like if you have rare items I believe it is yeah based on if you have too many rare items then it'll punish you and fluctuate based or no it was Yeah, based on friend stats, item rarity, and based on player inventory. And 
And the funny part is Nexon says that they had never applied the upgrade, or they never applied the dynamic RNG to upgrade items. You notice the wording there. To the upgrade items. They didn't say anywhere else. And I just find that incredibly scummy. I... It, it blows me away that they would sit there and go, Oh yeah, so we have a system that depending on where you live or where you are at the moment, we can directly reduce or increase your rewards. I'm sure you could pull some kind of discrimination case out of that one. But so now we have this whole system coming to light. And it's just... Nothing surprises me. Oh, and Nexon said that the investigation is doing damage to the Korean games industry. I'm like, no. This kind of shit being pulled in the first place does damage to the Korean games industry. I always made the joke about... I won't play Korean-made games, or I'm very skeptical of them, especially MMOs, because they will make it so to make an item, you have, like, make a sword or something, you have to get an item that only drops from a certain boss on the third Wednesday of every other month, if the month has a full moon, and it has to be raining outside, and it'll have a point zero 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 one percent drop chance, and you can only do the dungeon or raid once a day. Because as hyperbolic as that is, that's what it feels like. They have grind to the point of insanity. They turn games into jobs. So it's like, no, your brain-dead business decisions and scummy treatment of players do damage to the industry. But of course, their FTC giving out a 2.5% fine, it's not going to make a difference. They got caught, and all this tells them is, hey, next time, don't get caught, or make sure you have the money set aside for the fine. But man, just classic... Korean game devs. And, and that's not even the right statement, because it's not game devs either. If we're going to blame someone, it suits. Because they're the ones who are going to sit down and come up with absolutely brain-dead schemes like this to try to min-max profits to the point of the FTC having to step in. Which is also incredibly laughable when you look at, like... EA had governments bring the hammer down on just having the balls to put loot boxes in Battlefront 2. Can you imagine if in Battlefront 2 they kept the loot boxes, but did that kind of shit with it? Oh, your star cards. You have too many max rank star cards, so we're gonna reduce the drop rates of, like, ones you need. And we're gonna increase the chance of giving you duplicates. Oh, you have too many hero units, so we're going to punish that, and... God. They would've cooked those devs alive over an open flame for pulling that. And I would've joined in, because... That's insane. I keep saying it, but it is the most criminally insane kind of thing I've seen in a while. But like I said, South Korea, somehow both the most ruthlessly capitalist con com that country in the world, or one of them, 
And also the most glaringly incompetent. And it is kind of funny to me considering Nexon just lost a bunch of stock value in that whole Chinese gaming rule. Not even release of the rule, just the draft. They lost a ton of money. Makes you wonder. I mean, part of the problem is because of the Great Firewall, you're not going to have as many Chinese players know about it. But it would make you wonder if they did know about these drop rate changes, do they affect Chinese players? And how mad would they be? Because China's a big part of their, the Korean market for games. And I imagine if they found out they were getting scammed, they'd probably not play as much or not pay as much. We'll quick run that seasonal boss mission. Okay, so we just get no bonus spawns. I just can't get over the whole dynamic RNG bit, though. Nothing says scummy quite like punishing players who play more and then punishing players who have friends with good gear or have too many people on their friends list. Could you imagine that? Like, a game on Steam just being like, nah, you have, like, too many people on your friends list, now you have reduced drop rates. Have that in, like, Destiny, where the game's just like, sorry, you can't get the raid exotic because you have too many friends. You play too much, stop playing so that your activity can go down. I don't even care if it's some stupid, oh, we're combating gaming addiction. It's like, if you really wanted to combat addiction, you'd do something about the guy, because they showed the top spenders in, like, 2021 or 2022, and the top spenders spent, like, $200,000 American on Maple Story. It's like, if you, if that was going to be the argument, you'd probably want to stop the people who spent a quarter million dollars on a game that's actively scamming them. But none of it surprises me. We've, we've seen other instances of studios or companies getting caught doing something. And essentially, they just get a slap on the wrist, a little, you know, whack on the PP, and they're told, okay, you learned your lesson, right? We're not going to, you know, seize that money that you got essentially illicitly, which I think they should have. I feel like Nexon would have potentially collapsed, considering $400 million just siphoned right out of them, but. Don't do scummy things. Simple as that. And what was funny too is they were quoted saying that they they're like, oh well we it wasn't industry standard to talk about drop rates back in like 2010. So why are you punishing us for doing that back then? And it's like because you never disclosed it. 
if it was, oh, this happened for a game in 2010 and the game shut down 2012, nobody cares. The game shut down, it happened. But you have an active game and you just never told anybody. And they had the balls on multiple instances when people were saying, hey, the drop rates seem really weird. They would come out and say, no, they're fine, shut up. Which, honestly, that just fills me with a lot of, not exactly anger, but just annoyance. That's why I say, you know, make them pay the $420 million. Do I care? No. Fuck them. I think of the uh, Chappelle Show skit where he's working in like a FedEx or Kinko's. And he's just like, why? Because fuck them, that's why. That's my mentality. If this was stuff that was written down, clearly visible, hey, you can't get the best possible roll off these, here's the new drop rates, we modified them back in whatever year, blah, then I don't care. Then you can be as underhanded and douchey as you want because it is all readily available for the user to read. That's why I like when games are like, hey, you're doing a random kind of gotcha pull. Here are the stat breakdowns for the pull. Ultra rare has like a 1% chance. Rare has a whatever, uncommon, common, blah, blah, blah. That's great. I like seeing that because even though it is depressing when you see like my one Dragon Ball game, oh, an ultra rarity guy has a 0.2% drop, drop rate, but don't worry, you can triple it if you spend 3,000 crystals. At least I know, yeah, I'm probably not going to get it. Yet, oddly enough, I managed to get like two pulls on the Super Saiyan uh, Rosé version of Goku Black, which I was really happy about because he was like the one character I wanted at the time. And now I'm just sitting here waiting eventually to make an attempt at getting uh, Janemba, but that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. But I digress. At least I know my numbers. Instead of being told, hey, you might get some stuff, can't really tell you any specifics. If a company has to do the it's a secret for a drop rate, they're probably doing something shady, especially if they're charging money. I didn't even pay attention to what loot was off the boss because there was only one. Wow. What? 11% damage bonus per enrage token. Attacks remove an additional enrage token? That sucks. That is genuinely awful. Ooh. Oh. Focus state. Never mind. But that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button, it helps out the channel a lot, and if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.